Hi there, my name is Mel and welcome to M Squared, a channel where we're going to look at science, history and some of the lesser well-known contributors to the scientific endeavour. When we talk about climate change, we sort of think of it as a recent discovery, kind of something that's only come to light in the last few decades. But that's actually not the case. Turns out that the thermodynamic properties of carbon dioxide have been known about for a long time, since the mid-1800s. In 1856, Eunice Newton Foote published a paper talking about her findings regarding the thermodynamic properties of carbon dioxide and extrapolated on her findings, talking about how an atmosphere with a high CO2 content would warm excessively. Eunice Newton Foote was born in Connecticut in 1819 to father Isaac Newton, uh, no, not that one, a farmer and mother Thurza. As a young child, she moved to Bloomfield in upstate New York. Boarding across the state at a town called Troy, she had a well-rounded education, unusual for a girl of her time and Troy Female Seminary School offered her some unusual opportunities. The school had ties to a local science college whose founder, Amos Eaton, a convicted felon and born-again science communicator, was granted a pardon so he could teach the masses. He was so passionate for his subject, his teaching crossed boundaries of social convention. Science was for girls and boys alike. Eunice learned the scientific method and experimental techniques in the labs there, she learned the basics of chemistry, biology, and botany, her young scientific talent blooming in the academic environment. She grew up neighbor and classmate of Elizabeth Cady Stanton, one of the figureheads in the American women's suffrage movement. She was similarly involved in the activist scene, eventually penning the proceedings for the now famous Seneca Falls Conference and one of the signatories on the Declaration of Sentiments, which argued that for society to advance, Women need equity both professionally and politically. In 1840, she fell in love and married Elisha Foote, with whom she had two daughters, Mary and Augusta. Elisha was a lawyer, too with a love for chemistry. He worked for the Smithsonian Institution, making meteorological observations. He introduced Eunice to Joseph Henry, one of the leading scientists in America at the time, and the head of the aforementioned Smithsonian Institute. His work on the climate was foundational for Eunice and became a big influence on her work. They built a small lab at their home, and you could usually find her there, experimenting. She had a particular interest in thermodynamics. She invented and patented the first thermostatically controlled stove in 1842. But her most famous work was on the chemistry and physics of gases, especially studying their reactions to absorbing heat from the sun. This was still fairly cutting edge, with Fourier's mathematical modelling of heat still only a few decades old. Her setup included a pump, glass chambers, and several thermometers. She rigged up each chamber with two thermometers each, filled each chamber with gases, and, leaving them in the sun, compared the amounts of heat trapped by hydrogen, oxygen, CO2, and regular air with different amounts of pressure and moisture content. As most of us know, in a not particularly rigorous scientific way, Humid air traps heat very well, and a lot of us in the early 21st century also know that carbon dioxide also holds heat pretty well. But it was Eunice Newton Foote who discovered it over 150 years ago. She wrote up her results in a paper called Circumstances Affecting the Heat of the Sun's Rays and submitted it to the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the eighth meeting in 1856. The paper was only six pages long, but the results were huge. As encouraging as the organisation was, allowing women to join as members, she wasn't allowed to present her findings herself. Male professionals were able to join as fellows, whereas women who were generally excluded from professional academia were only allowed to join as members, a slightly less prestigious membership level. Joseph Henry, who ended up presenting Eunice's work on her behalf, added a preface. Science was of no country and of no sex. The sphere of woman embraces not only the beautiful and the useful, but the true. As groundbreaking as her findings were, the paper was left out of the published proceedings of the meeting. And it seems like the conclusion was not really appreciated for what it was, just in general. Otherwise, perhaps Joseph Henry would have 
used his influence both in America and overseas to push her work much harder and publicised it much more than they ended up doing. Later that year, it was published in the American Journal for Arts and Science under her name and her name only. There was a write-up in the September issue of Scientific American, a column titled Scientific Ladies, Experiments with Gases. Over the next 12 months, her work made its way across the Atlantic. Excerpts were published in Die Vorschritte der Physik im Jahre 1856, in the Edinburgh New Philosophical Journal, and the Jahresbericht über die Vorschritte der reinen pharmaceutischen und technischen Physik in Europa. 1856. These articles, however, left out the crux of her argument, and the Edinburgh Journal even published it under the name of her husband, Elisha. Ah! In 1859, Irish physicist John Tyndall made a submission to the Proceedings of the Royal Society regarding different gases and their ability to trap the sun's heat. We know nothing of the ability even of air to trap the sun's heat radiated from terrestrial sources. A man who evidently hadn't done a literature review. He has a lot of defenders, but he did have a paper published in the same journal, like the same issue, the same 1856 issue, that Eunice Newton Foote's paper was published in. His was about colour vision. By modern standards, however, Tyndall's work was far more thorough and comprehensive. He studied infrared radiation, which is a big component of climate science. Um, but he had access to a whole university department, equipment, assistants, and Eunice had her lab set up at home. She didn't even have equipment to detect infrared radiation. Regardless, he still should have made reference to her work on carbon dioxide. An atmosphere of that gas would give to our Earth a high temperature and if, as some suppose, at one point of its history, the air had mixed with it a larger proportion than at present, an increased temperature from its own action, as well from increased weight, must have necessarily resulted. In 1856! Her next experiments related to the electrical conductivity of different gases, again with her glass containers and pump, and again with hydrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, an air of varying pressures and dampness. This time, however, she used electrified copper wires and a gold leaf electrometer to measure the charges between them. Compressing cool, dry air caused her electrometer to flit and flicker with static, while compressing warm, humid air didn't make a difference at all. Very interesting. No one had written about this particular phenomena before. She elaborated on her findings to make broader statements about electrical charge and magnetism in the atmosphere, something that is still a bit mysterious even today. On a new source of electrical excitation was published in the Proceedings of the American Association for the Advancement of Science in August 1857 in the Physics and Chemistry section. After her climate research, she found success again with her inventions. In 1860, she designed a new style of shoe sole manufacture using a single piece of rubber to prevent squeaking. And in 1867, she patented a papermaking machine which placed the layers of pulp perpendicular to each other, making stronger sheets with a smoother finish. Perhaps she designed the paper mill to help with her hobby of painting. Her favourite subjects were landscapes. And over the next couple of decades, her two daughters gave her three grandchildren each, and in 1888, at the age of 69, she died. Her career in climate science was groundbreaking not only for her discoveries, but also the adversity she's faced as a woman doing basically anything. Unfortunately for her, Tyndall's work drew far more attention and accolades, and he eventually went down for a long time as being the discoverer of climate change and the properties of carbon dioxide. It was only in 2011 when petrol geologist Ray Sorensen found one of Eunice's papers published in 1857 and after digging through archives and journals and genealogy records, um, he was able to unearth more stuff about her life and work. And it's really only even been in the last five years that he's managed to spread the word through conferences and lectures, and it's seeped out into online publications and things now. 
Sadly today, even with over 150 years of a head start, CO2 levels are still rising and the effects of global warming are already being felt around the world. The brunt is being felt by those who have the least resources to handle it. Developing nations, indigenous communities, impoverished people, women, people with chronic health conditions and the elderly. Decades of lobbying from the fossil fuel industry has kept the media and politicians generally in check. They have a vested interest in obscuring and muddying the waters with regards to the understanding of global warming and also how old that understanding is. I mean, there are things that we can do, vote with your wallet, vote for environmental policies, um, find out where your politicians are getting all their money from and also where they invest their own personal money. It's not financial advice, but there are banks and pension funds like superannuation, funds that specifically divest from fossil fuels. And um, there are some other ideas, some of my favourite YouTubers I'll leave down the bottom, Simon Clark, Curtis Bowdy, a good one from Friendly Geordies as well, I'll leave them in the links below. Kind of a bummer ending, but I mean this whole topic is sort of fraught from the beginning, um, but I think if we can channel some of the intelligence, tenacity and political will of people like Eunice Newton Foote, then we could make tiny changes and chip away at and make a difference. So thanks for watching my first video. Um, hope it wasn't too rough around the edges. Still learning the craft. Um, yeah, so I've got so many more ideas. I've got so many people. My short list is like 300 people long so far. Um, but yeah, the next one's already scripted and researched and drawn. So I'm um, looking forward to bringing that out soon. Um, if you've got any ideas for other subjects you'd like to see or feedback I'd love to hear from you in the comments and also in case you couldn't tell I like to draw so you can check out my Instagram I've got lots of paintings space stuff and other bits and pieces skateboarding too if you're into that anyway uh, I'll leave it there thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon